For this lesson, I will be importing and scaling a plan for a small, sustainable cabin I created in Procreate. But I could just as easily use this plan for a small house created in Morfolio Trace. The source of the 2D plan doesn't matter, but I love that we can develop a design from sketch to 3D model without ever leaving the iPad, now that SketchUp for iPad is a reality. I'm going to duplicate the sketch first just to be safe and so I don't damage the original, and then I can make any alterations I need to the duplicate. If I already have an overall dimension in mind, I can just go ahead and share this document, exporting it as a JPEG, then sharing it to my Photos Library, or saving it to my iCloud Drive. But in many cases, I haven't thought through the dimensions yet, and need to add a few before I send it over to SketchUp. Now I could take the time to annotate them by hand, but I can also just import one of my scale rulers and stretch it out until it matches some dimension I have in mind. This has the advantage, as you'll see later on, of providing very clear markings I can refer to when deciding where to place my guides in SketchUp, as opposed to trying to choose where to place my guides amongst a tangle of out-of-focus freehand lines. Because this is early concept design, let's not forget that if I'm off by a few feet, it just won't matter. But at least this will get me started. I only need to provide the ruler in the X or the Y axis, but in some cases it's not a bad idea to duplicate the scale, turn it 90 degrees, and align it with the other axis of the sketch. This will make it just that much easier when I'm stretching my guidelines and creating my walls in SketchUp. And when I'm done, I go back to the Actions menu, tap the Share button, and save the file to iCloud Drive just like we did before. The process is pretty much the same in Morfolio Trace with its built-in scale rulers, but here I will make a screenshot with a ruler present so I can use that as a reference in SketchUp. And obviously there's no need to import a ruler the way I do in Procreate. Once the screenshot is recorded, I export that to iCloud Drive the same way I did the 2D Procreate plan. With the 2D plan exported and waiting for us, now let's open SketchUp for iPad and go to the home screen. Tap the little arrow next to the Create New button to set your dimensions and choose architectural feet and inches, or the metric equivalent, if you're in a metric region. Next, tap the Create New button. When your workspace opens up, tap the gear settings icon and make sure that Just Draw is engaged in pencil mode, because we will be doing most of our lessons with only the pencil. After the grid and the scale figure appear, take a minute to rotate the image with a single finger, or use two fingers to pinch, zoom, and pan across the screen so you have lots of space above and to the right of the scale figure. Don't worry about exactly how much right now, just enough to place an image and make it stick with plenty of room to spare around the edges. Now tap the three dots at the bottom of the left side toolbar and locate the insert image icon at the top right. Tap the icon, then tap Use as Image Object. Then tap Browse Files. Tap the file you want. Then when the dialog box closes, tap the point of the pencil on the origin, and while gently holding down the tip of the pencil, move diagonally away from the origin until the plan fills the workspace. This takes some getting used to, but let's practice it now a bunch of times. Tap the Add Image tool. Tap Use as Image Object, tap Browse Files, tap the file you want, tap the origin and pull it diagonally away across the workspace until it fills the workspace. When the image is large enough, and remember it doesn't have to be anywhere near the actual scale yet, lift the pencil and your image will be successfully inserted into SketchUp. Before we scale up the plan, let's look at some other ways to navigate around. In the three dot menu, go to the Orbit tool, and notice that you can rotate with only your pencil. Now try the Pan tool, and the same thing. No fingers needed, now you can just do it all with the pencil. Finally, let's try the 
magnifying glass tool, the zoom tool. And this one is great. You just go up or down on the screen, back to the pan, back to the zoom, up and down on the screen, back to the pan. And now that ruler is right where you want it when you start pulling your dimensional guidelines. Now let's scale the plan. Tap on the tape measure tool in the left menu, or find it by tapping the three dots at the bottom of the menu. Then with the tape measure tool activated, tap the point of the pencil on the left edge of the ruler, the zero point of the scale. Then while gently holding the tip of the pencil down, draw a line across to your reference point on the right. Let's repeat this so we can build that muscle memory. Just start by tapping as close to a reference point as you can on the left. In this case, my zero point on my ruler. Then stretch it across to some other known point, in this case, 44 feet, and release. Now, I'm not scaling up the plan yet. I'm just practicing pulling this ruler across from one known point to another. Now let's do it for keeps. I'm just going to stretch this out a little bit so you can see as clearly as possible. I don't need this length dialog box at the moment, but I'm going to go from 0 to 44 with my tape measure. So let's make it active. I'll pull that line across for the last time. I will get as close as I can. Now I'm going to tap the length dialog box and enter 44. And that brings up this dialog box. Do I want to resize the model? And of course I do. And lo and behold, my entire 2D import has scaled up to the size that I have specified. And to prove that, let's just look at this scale figure that SketchUp adds. I'll use the Select tool way up there. I'll tap on him and I will pull him over to the ruler. And when I zoom in, you can see he's about five foot six to six foot high. But let's, uh, just to be sure, let's lay him down on his side. I'll use the rotate tool and I'll lock it into the green axis. Tap, extend, and pull him down. And sure enough, just about five feet, six, five feet, eight, something like that. So this uh, really works. Scaling up these plants, very accurate way to get started in SketchUp. Now I'll use two fingers again to undo that and tap out of this situation. And let me use the pinch and zoom to scale ourselves back out, zoom back out. And all that's left is, um, I wanna actually pull this plan over and make sure the corner of the plan is also coincidental with the origin, the X, Y, Z axis in SketchUp. So I'm gonna activate the plan and then press the move tool and pull that corner of the house right over until in my best guess, the exterior face of that wall and maybe you can see a little better the left side of that scale ruler which I aligned with the wall originally, is now right there at the green axis. Now that's pretty important, so let's practice that again. I'm going to get the plan where I can see both the corner of the design and the origin XYZ axis. I'm going to activate the move tool. I'm going to tap on roughly on that corner and pull it over, and in this case it snaps back to that axis because I think we already did it once. But that's the idea. Get it back over there to align perfectly with the, in this case, the green axis. And if I now come in here with the zoom tool, and let's pan over a little bit. I really want you to see, get a good view of this, how that freehand plan plus that imported scale really is just spot on there on that origin of the XYZ axis in SketchUp. In the next lesson, we'll use the measuring tape tool to begin to create a series of guides that we will build our walls on top of. In other words, instead of trying to build each wall on top of these fuzzy freehand lines of mine, 
we're going to stretch guides out to precise dimensions. And then when we do start drawing walls, they will all snap to these guides and make the experience that much better and that much more organized. So we'll see you in the next lesson.